Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this October 6th. I'm Alan Locker. Mr. Kurt McKinney is here today to look back at his almost 40 year career working in television and film. He made his film debut playing Jason Stilwell in the 1985 martial arts film, No Retreat, No Surrender. He also appeared in the film Sworn to Justice. In addition to his film roles, Kurt had a number of guest starring roles on some primetime hit series early in his career, including Give Me a Break, Highway to Heaven, and Alf, to name a few. He recently appeared on Blue Bloods, Power, and the limited series, The Thing About Pam. He is well known to daytime audiences for his three-year stint as Ned Ashton on General Hospital, and of course for his role as Matt Reardon on Guiding Light, which he played on and off from July 1994 through the end of the series in 2009. He recently appeared in the Gabriel Inferno series and is working on a new martial arts film. It's such a pleasure to welcome Kurt McKinney back to the locker room. Alan, thank you so much, man. What You're a, welcome, what a my friend. There. Holy cow. <laughs> it is that, so buddy. good to see you. Yeah, thank you. You as well. You look great. Back at you. Back at you. Um, I love those pictures you recently posted from Block Island. Is that oh, a yeah. favorite place of yours? Uh, n well, it's my first time there. So now I would say it, it ranks up there with one of my favorite places, a beautiful, beautiful island. It reminded me uh, a little bit of Shelter Island, which was actually my probably one of my first days or first weeks of shooting on Guiding Light. Maeve and I worked uh, on the 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 in the boat scenes and the yeah. and all that stuff uh, on Shelter Island. Yeah. Reminds me a little bit of that, but yeah, it's a really, really beautiful place. Right. My wife and you, I you totally there. just brought it all back to me. I forgot that is how you first appeared. Yeah, that's yeah. incredible. How's the family doing? Family's good. Family's good. Thankfully, kids are grown and working and thriving. And and uh, you know, Ron and I are the empty nesters now. And uh, you know. Uh, well, you have a you have a little baby you rescued. We have a little baby Winston. Well, really Winnie. It's she's a girl, but we call her Winston because she's more like a boy, and um, she's just a crazy little French Korean French bulldog. <laughs> I love it. that you rescued, which is always you awesome. Rescued from Korea, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, tell me what drove you to martial arts. You know, training at age twelve. Um. Uh, you know, I just thought it was really cool. Um, I think I had um, was a big fan of uh, the Wild Wild West when I was a kid, which was a show that starred Robert Conrad. Yeah. yeah. Um, and luckily, I got to work with Robert Conrad in a movie of the week uh, many years later, and got to uh, got to know him. Uh, he was a great guy. But uh, so did, Robert, did Conrad, that blow your mind? It blew my mind. Yeah, <laughs> because literally. I got to the set. I was playing the rookie cop. I was just off the of general hospital and I got this movie of the week and I, and I was playing the rookie cop and uh, I said, well, who's playing the chief, you know, or whatever they go, Robert Conrad. I go, Robert Conrad, the wild, wild west, Robert Conrad. They're like, yeah. In fact, he's in his trailer right now. He wants you, wants you to meet him over there so you can run lines. And I'm like, I walked in and I like, I don't believe this. <laughs> I get to work with Robert Conrad. So, uh, in, fa in fact, uh, I'll have to I'll do one more of my throwback Thursdays on my, oh, yeah. I'll have to post some pictures of me and Robert. Um, so, uh, yeah. And then Bill Superfoot Wallace, who I just posted recently, I met years later when we were doing a, a stunt camp training thing for Black Belt Magazine here in New York, actually. Um, and Bill Superfoot Wallace was a middleweight kickboxing champion at the time. Um, um, and then, of course, I saw you know, my first Bruce Lee movie and uh, Cato uh, on the Green Hornet, Bruce Lee. So I think that I just thought it was the coolest thing. I thought, you know, what? I, I want to know how to do that. I got to do that. So um, my parents hooked me up with the local Taekwondo instructor, Master Kwang Ha So, and uh, I was in. Black belt? First degree black belt in Taekwondo, and then I went on to American style kickboxing, and I got a second degree black belt in that style. Yeah. I, I My parents signed me up. I think it was actually Taekwondo, and I loved it, but my my dad got sick, and I, you know, my mom couldn't take me anymore, but I really loved it. I remember yeah. that so much. 
it's it's a great sport for kids, uh, especially kids that aren't super athletic. And I wasn't, you know, I was not Mister Baseball, Football. But, you know, I was not that guy. I played tennis and you know golf and some other things. But um, it it I think it really um, learning something like that really uh, it, you know adds to your athleticism so that you do you actually can go out and and, and play some sports that you're not too good at. <laughs> Because you're not, not not naturally good at because you've learned, uh, you know, martial arts with all of the, the the speed work and the balance and the flexibility and you know it, it can't not it can't not enhance anything that you do whether it's golf or tennis or basketball or baseball or whatever you know but it's 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 really cool to be able to do it all these years later um, in a film again. Uh, you, you you just finished a film in Germany, the Les Kumite. I mean, what was that like? getting to to not only film in Germany, but do martial arts on film? Uh, surreal a little bit because, you know, I, I kept up with my martial arts all these years. I didn't stop training, not wasn't training like I was training for a competition or for a movie, but I kept it in my back pocket always, you know, every at least once a week, you know, some training and, um, um, you know, Doing it again. The last time I did one when I was I was on Guiding Light when I shot Sworn to Justice, and uh, that was in '96. That's the last time I threw a kick on camera. <laughs> it, you just it took me back. <laughs> you just took me back to Biloxi, and the oh. picture the picture I have of like you, Beth Chamberlain, Rob Bogue, all like doing <laughs> <laughs> doing like kicks. I wish I had that in front of me. <laughs> what an amazing experience that was. Uh, was just a real uh, eye opener. And uh, uh, it was really, it was great to be able to get back and do something really cool like that. Love, love. We had a great time there. And and just, and you're stuff. right. And for a show called The Guiding Light and what, you know, how it started out with the Reverend and the light, uh, it really yeah. was the perfect celebration of that show. And it, it really was. Yeah. And we got a prime time uh, spot with that yeah. show, with that segment. Um, Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Really you you also just appeared in the Gabriel Inferno series on Passion Flicks. Yeah. Tell us what was that about? And and did you have fun? <laughs> I, I, I did have fun. Uh, I, I got to play I got to play uh, dad. I got to play the father to the, the lead character. I played the, the female lead. Um, and um, so I'm, I'm in the, I mean, don't tune into it if you go and see me or you'll be, you'll be like waiting forever, but <laughs> scenes throughout each, it's a trilogy, it's three. It's, I think it's Gabriel's Inferno, Gabriel's Redemption, or uh, Rapture and Gabriel's Redemption. So um, they're, they're romance novels and uh, Tosca Musk um, created her own uh, network uh, called Passion Flicks. And she's really, I think she just kind of does these romance novels. And um, she um, she picked me out of a lineup, literally, to, to play the the dad. Uh, that's so awesome. I didn't even have to audition for it, which was. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's got to be the best. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I, I can imagine. I didn't have to for the last Kumite either, which is good, too. Oh, that's awesome. I yeah. For the last Kumite, when does that come out? Uh, probably sometime next year. Um, they're still, you know, they're still working on the editing and sound and uh, music and, and all of that stuff for it. It's, it's um, the uh, Sean Lowe, the producer uh, is German guy and um, it was German film company and pretty much everybody I worked with was either German or, or Belgian or French or, you know, whatever. So it was um, it kind of reminds uh you as an American, how we, how everybody speaks more than one language except for me and and most of us that I know. So, uh, but it, it was great getting to work with a diverse, you know, European crowd like that, and getting to see Germany. I was all over Germany from from Dusseldorf to Hamburg. You know, had you been before? Well, here's the funny thing: my wife Miranda's family's from Germany, so. Everyone in her family was born in Germany, except for her. She was born uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, in the same hospital that I was born in, a year and a half later. Love that. Love that. Um, but um, 
she hadn't been there since she was 10 and I had decided to take her there for her birthday this year. So we already had tickets to go to Germany for two weeks. Um, and I was supposed to go to, I was supposed to go to Bulgaria to shoot the last Kumite. And at the last minute they changed it and said, we're just going to stay here in Germany. You, you're flying in here. So I spent five weeks in Germany this year. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It was wow. Great. So, and then when we, when I, when Miranda and I went, we were visiting, you know, her family. So we were in, you know, uh, Munich and then we went to uh, uh, Austria. Um, and, and, um, and then from there we were in uh, Coburg and uh, um, just, um, what's the other name? Bedeckenstadt, where her family is from, um, Braunschweig all these, you know, obscure sort of German villages that maybe most people don't know about. And we ended up in Berlin at the, at the end. So I feel like I've literally, I feel like I know uh, Germany, like I know New York. <laughs> well, that's so great. What a great experience. Yeah. Yeah. Really was. And, and I didn't know what to expect, you know, because yeah, um, only pretty much all of my acting career has been in the U S either LA or Atlanta or, you know, New York, but to go someplace like that and get to work, I was unsure, but it was just a great. But experience. to be in any country for five weeks, you know, that's the yeah. one thing I regret, like for, for college is I, get, I didn't live abroad. It's the only yeah. thing. I yeah. My kids were lucky. They got to study abroad for a bit. You know, I didn't get to do that either. In fact, I had not traveled to Europe until, uh, you know, a couple of years ago when we went to visit uh, our daughter in London and then visited friends in France. And, you know, so we were in Paris and, you know, and then, you know. That, that's one of my favorites, even though London's one of my favorites too, but Paris. Paris is, is really special, isn't it? Special. And Barcelona in Spain is amazing as well. We got, I went there too, not too young, but yeah. I don't think I fully appreciate it. I really want to go back and spend time in Spain. I did it early. Yeah. I think, you know, I was probably 30 ish, but yeah. I, I feel like I didn't take that all in. So, yeah, you know. it's great. And you got to go down to the, 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 you know, stay on the Mediterranean. We stayed in a place called Palafragal, which is right on the You, you need to go to Greece if you haven't done. Yeah. Well, Miranda's done the Greece thing. Okay. I, had, I haven't, I was supposed to go, but I was, I was busy auditioning in LA and I couldn't, it was before we were married and I couldn't, I couldn't break away. I was too busy. <laughs> Tell me. You, you, Tell have me. Plenty of time, you have plenty of time to do it. Plenty of time. Um, yeah. You got to work with Renee Zellweger on the Pam series. The yeah. uh, what, what was she like? Yeah. Thing about Pam. Well, she was in a fat suit. Um, <laughs> they had her. They had her. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you know that story about Pamela Huck, but uh, no. she was apparently uh, a bit of a, a serial killer. Uh, uh, she had uh, staged uh, uh, about, well, I guess she was accused of pushing her mother off of a, uh, a balcony and killing her. She was uh, accused of killing this young boy who she's trying to set up to make it look like she had killed her friend who she had already killed. So it was like three people that she was accused of killing. And um, when she, um, when they brought her in for questioning, um, she stole a pen from the from the detective or whatever and then asked to use the bathroom she went in the bathroom and tried to off herself by jabbing herself in the jugular you know with this pen um she's you know she's in the penitentiary now for i don't know forever i guess but but so i got to be the judge that you know put her put her away she she took a um she took a particular plea deal, which I should know uh, what it's called. <laughs> As the judge? <laughs> <laughs> which means she, uh, uh, do you know what a, do you know what a, oh shit. Anyway, uh, I, she takes a plea deal, which means she, she admits that there's enough evidence to convict her, but she doesn't actually admit to the crime. So they had to take that deal, which was bittersweet for the prosecutors, but uh, that that's, uh, that's how we. We put her away there on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she was uh, super, super sweet and nice to work with. I was, I just had a day's worth of work, but um, it was, uh, it was uh, actually down. Well, the best part of the trip was we were down in um, 
we were down in the French Quarter in Louisiana. <laughs> so I told Miranda, I said, we're, you're coming with me. She goes, no, I'm not going with you. You're going to, going to work. I said, yeah, but we're going early. <laughs> we're going to play. New Orleans, for I sure. I said, you know what? I don't have to, I'm playing a judge. I don't need to look good. I'm going down there. We're going to eat and drink <laughs> ourselves to death for four days. And then I'm going to go play the judge. And you'll, if you see it, you'll see it. I don't look good. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny somebody said they don't remember you in that maybe they didn't recognize they you didn't, they probably didn't recognize me that's um, chamberlain that's chamberlain called me she goes you she goes, most people you don't know what to do with those kind of parts but she goes you really made that interesting such good I food supported. in new orleans such oh my food. gosh the, the the um the um char grilled uh oysters we just that's all you do is eat gumbo and oysters and you drink i mean and you get literally you order a, a vodka tonic and it comes it's a double <laughs> well, I, I didn't order a double it goes yeah they, that's just the way they come yeah <laughs> and it's a cup that you can just take with you and just walk into the next place and then you go i'll uh, have another fun in a tonic. while it's probably it might even it's probably since guiding light that i've been there because you know i went down a couple times because we kept doing some things yeah. surrounding find your light let's get to spend some time uh, actually in the french quarter yeah i did yeah. i i took nicole forrester and lawrence they did a, a local affiliate interview so the three of us i think we drove we might have even driven from biloxi i don't remember it's a long time ago but oh, we did yeah. yeah yeah we probably did wasn't that what what year was that 2000 2007 isn't seven. that crazy yeah crazy yeah how long ago that was that was, that was a good time was um a good time. were your career aspirations always acting uh yeah i think so but actually before i realized i i thought well, that i think i want to give that a try um i i i thought about um law studying law and being a lawyer Ooh. you know I, was there something I, that triggered that, like seeing a case or? I, um, yeah, just I, I think just probably, you know, watching Perry Mason or something <laughs> <laughs> and thinking that that would be a cool job. I and mean, I think, you know, my parents were kind of pushing me then. The principal of my high school, she goes, you know, you should think about being a lawyer. <laughs> I think because I was in her office enough times. But <laughs> <laughs> she was like, OK, Mr. McKinney, what, what's your story now? <laughs> So what made you flip? Um, I think just just I was such a fan of of movies I, and and television too, but especially films. I mean, my dad would take me to movies when I was a kid that my mom didn't want to go see. You know, maybe like uh, you know, The Getaway or Papillon or uh, The Deer Hunter. You know, all these all these great you know classic. Um, movies and um and then when i was kind of old enough to go to movies on my own you know 13 14 you get dropped off the movies you know you go see jaws and you go see rocky um and you know um it just um said gosh that would just be the coolest job and i think i um i think what well here's the interesting thing i i dropped out of college because i was like i'm just floating here i don't know what i'm doing so dropped out and i got a job at a car dealership selling cars when i was like 19 20 years old and uh i was reading an article that um i think dennis quaid was quoted as saying well if if you're not willing to put in dedicate your life to it and put in the time necessary uh, that it takes to become a successful actor uh you might as well just be a, a, a car salesman and I'm reading this and I'm like well I'm a car salesman and I don't want to be <laughs> so um uh, probably within a couple of months the uh the owner of the the Louisville Cosmo Casablanca modeling agency came in and I uh, met her I sold her a car and she said you should be working for me and so she brought me in and I started doing some local commercials and uh, industrial films for Kentucky Fried Chicken. That was the do and don't guy for Kentucky Fried Chicken. And, um, and um, you know, they're training films. And, um, you know, I just said, you know what? 
I think I can do it. And just, you know, I met a, a, a guy who was doing the same thing at the same agency. And he said, we should, I said, I'm thinking about moving to New York. And he said, no, 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 we should go to LA. Let's go to LA. I said, you, you want to go? And he said, yeah, if you go to LA, I'm in. I said, all right. You know, it was all I needed was a sidekick, you know, a buddy to, to somebody to go with. And uh, we started planning it and we, we took off in uh, 1994. And, and never looked back. No, no. Wow. In fact, I had, I had in my um, quest for, you know, finding myself, I signed up for the Louisville Police Department, which, you know, they've been in the spotlight a lot lately. But um, when I got to L.A., I was there, got a job on Sunset Boulevard at a place called the Old Spaghetti Factory <laughs> and uh, was waiting tables. And um, I um, I got no retreat, no surrender. and um, I'm I was literally there like five months and everybody in that place hated me because I'm like, well, I'm leaving. I got a movie. <laughs> it's like, I mean, not only, I mean, not, not a TV show, not a one day, not a background player, a movie. Yeah. A movie. <laughs> but, but just to set but the, still a movie, but still a movie. Yeah. A low budget action film, a uh, Hong Kong film company. First time, uh, the, the guy who plays Bruce Lee in it was Korean. Didn't speak English. The director was Chinese. He didn't speak English. The producer was Chinese. He didn't speak English. Um, so, you know, I, I'm used to working with people that I have to communicate with, um, <laughs> <laughs> through, you know, signs, you know, <laughs> um, through. But taking me back, getting, getting that and, and, you know, being in that film, what was that like for somebody, you know, you moved from Louisville, you, you know, out to yeah. Hollywood trying and five months later, you're, on set. Yeah. Um, you know, just happened really quick, kind of hard to believe, but I was, it's like people would say, you went from Louisville, Kentucky to LA. Did you have, you know, was there a culture shock? And I go, you know, not that I recall. I just remember getting there and going, yes, yes. This is where, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to be doing. This I knew, in fact, I just knew that I didn't necessarily think that anything would happen anytime soon or maybe ever. But I knew that I had to show up. I had to put myself there and just see what would happen. Or I would never, it would never sit right with me. You know, I would, you know, wake up one day and be 40 and go, wow, why didn't I try that? You know, why didn't, why didn't I even try? So I think I knew I just had to, I had to be there. And for me, having a job waiting tables and going to acting class at night, you know, on off nights was like, that's all I really needed. Just let me be that guy for a while. Uh, let me be the guy who's shopping agents with my, you know, photo in my hand and walking in offices. And I, back then I would just, I just would go in and announce and knock on the door and say, I'm here to, I'd look at the name of the agent that I was supposed to meet. Can't get away with that anymore. But I would just, you know, say I'm here to see so and so. I'm here to see Alan Locker, and they said, "Oh, do you have an appointment?" I go, no. But I was just in the neighborhood, and I thought maybe he might have a moment, you know. And most of the time, they go, you. "Well, we'll take your picture. We'll take your picture." And then one day, somebody goes, "Hang on a second. And they go to the back, and they come back, and they go, "They they would like to meet you," you know. They That's went, incredible. Back Good quick. for you. Yeah. Um, the the other thing about you know five months and getting a film, you got a martial arts film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, that, you know. So here's the other thing. I, I almost feel like if you, if you read that book, The Secret, uh, you know, you have to secret things to make them happen. I think uh, subconsciously, you know, I was probably doing that, you know, mm -hmm. because I said, well, you know, I've studied martial arts my whole life, you know, practically since I was 12. I said, you know, maybe I can, maybe I can go out there and get into, maybe I can do a martial arts film, or you know, um, you know, maybe I could try out for a soap. You know, it'd be cool to be on a soap. Um, and um, so I think I, I just I just put those thoughts out in the universe and then started acting classes and then got the job and then got the apartment and then, you know, did all the th just it, it just sort of like connecting the dots until something happened. And when No Retreat, No Surrender came along, a, a buddy of mine that I was waiting tables with, he goes, did you see that in Drama Log? That used to be a publication you could just mm -hmm. get. Like the backstage. 
Yeah, like backstage, exactly. And uh, he said, they're doing, shooting a crime. You're going, really? I said, I'll go pick it up. I pick it up. I look at it. Send your picture and resume. And I did that. Nothing. And then, you know, maybe a month later, he goes, are you going to that open call for uh, Ring of Truth? That's what it was called at the time. It got changed. Are you going to that open call for Ring of Truth? And I said, um, no, I, I said, I sent him a picture and resume. Um, they didn't call me. He goes, well, it's an open call. Anybody can just show up. It's a Saturday. It's Saturday on Saturday. And uh, I think I'd been out uh, the night before with friends and I was laying by my pool the next day on a Saturday, a little hungover and <laughs> laying in that beautiful California sun. I was just happy to be there. And I thought, oh, wow, that time is it? It was like three o'clock. And I looked at the drama log. It's like, you know, from noon to five or something like that. And I was like, oh, well, it's just almost over. And you know, I just laid there for a few minutes, tried to go back to sleep and something. <laughs> Shit. All right. I got to go. I got to go. And I just grabbed my, my karate uniform, my headshot and all my stuff, took a shower and got there. And, and um, the guard the almost didn't let me in at the gate. He said, oh, I think they're, they're getting ready to wrap up. It was like 4, 4.30. It was like almost over. He said, I think they're getting ready to wrap up. I said, oh, really? He said, yeah. He said, I think they're just looking for the lead character. I said, okay. I, I'll, I'll try out for the lead. And he said, oh, I think they're looking for like a guy to play 17. I was 22 at the time. You saw that movie. I looked like I was 14. The guard <laughs> at the gate goes, oh, you know, you look a little old to be playing a 17-year-old. I said, never know. He said, all right, go on in. I went in and and uh, there was still a line. There were still people there. And somebody came out and picked me out of the line and took me in and had me show them what I could do. Had me read some read some dialogue with um, with the writer and one of the uh, and a couple other script people there. Um, and didn't let me leave without saying, okay, we're going to draw up paperwork and you're, you're playing the lead. Crazy. And I'm literally driving home. This is 1984. I'm driving home in my car down Sunset Boulevard. The sun is, is setting. And I'm just like, 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 um, like I've been struck by lightning, you know, like everything's just going through body and I have nobody. I've got a 30 minute ride home and to, to my apartment to get, to get to the phone and um, I, I got no phone. Oh, I call people and tell them. Um, and uh, I think like the first week I was shooting, uh, I, I I get home one night just exhausted, and there's a message on my machine to call my mom and dad and call my dad. He said, "Well, he said your number's up. They called you at the Louisville Police Department. Time to come in for uh, to the academy." He said, "I guess you're not coming home, are you?" No, Dad, I guess not. Wow. wow. Hey, the guy who you went out there with, did he end up uh, staying in the business? No, no, he didn't stay in the business. He was a good friend for many years, and unfortunately, um, he died in a motorcycle accident in 1996. So. Oh, God, I'm sorry, Kurt. Yeah. So, You know, it seems like when you start talking about this stuff, it's – you know, uh, just yesterday, you know, and you realize mm. it's, you know, what, 40, 39 years ago. Yeah. It, so. uh, incredible. Crazy. Um, you yeah. mentioned, you know, saying you wanted to do soaps. Did you know soaps? Like, had you watched or? So my, my mom watched the secret storm. That was her. soap. yeah. And the end of night, I think she watched. Um, and, um, and, a buddy of mine had turned me on just dark shadows when we were like, when we were kids. He's like, Oh, this is a scary show. It's on in the afternoon. It's vampires and stuff. I was, <laughs> I, was, I was a nerdy kid. I was into monster models and stuff like that. You know, I love horror films, love them. And that's the one thing I haven't uh, had a chance to partake in as a, is a horror film yet. But um, actually I'm supposed to go back to Germany to do one next year. Hopefully we'll see. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they have a lot of um, the same similarities fandom to soaps, horror films. They really do. Uh, they really do. Germans, uh, I've come to find out, first off, No Retreat, No Surrender is like, over there is like Rocky. Like Rocky and Sylvester Stallone was for me. I, I, was, I was pretty taken aback to um, how that movie is revered there and, what it, and how it's thought of. Um, it's um it was a big deal 
it was a really big deal for a lot of people, not just there. I get, I get mail from people in, you know, um, Czech Republic and, and, and places where, um, I got a letter from a guy one time who said I, we weren't allowed to have movies where I'm from some Slavic country, some place. I I don't know if it was Czech Republic or where, but, um, we're not allowed to see that. He said, I had, I had to pay a week's worth of work to get a bootleg copy of no retreat, no surrender. And I had, I had to hide it because it was illegal to own it. And it's like, like, and he said, this is a movie that I watched hundreds upon hundreds of time. And, and I get notes from people all the time now that I'm on Instagram um, that said that they, they, to this day, they have to watch that movie every you know, so often they just need a, they need that fix. Like, like I, well, I'll, like I'll watch Jaws. <laughs> Once in a while, I'll go, just need to watch Jaws. Yeah, it's like yeah. a comfort movie for me. Totally. There, there's um, total movies like that. You just need a fix. You just need that fix. So yeah. I, I was, I was humbled, pleasantly oh, surprised and, and humbled. But yeah, that they, that the really, the big love is martial arts films and, and horror. It was a, in fact, there was a cir- circus of horror going on while I was there. It was a circus of horror show that was big, oh, wow. like, like Cirque du Soleil, only the circus. That's what you have to say in German. Love that. Love yeah. that. Um, um, take me back to uh, the audition and, and screen test for Ned Ashton. What do you remember? Um, I remember that... Uh, my agents and I had just had um, uh, a, a talk about what I was going to do because I had turned down No Retreat, No Surrender Part Two for a multitude of reasons, and 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 then turned down the series of films called The American Ninja, which they were all going to be filmed in South Africa. And at the time, um, with the apartheid, I didn't feel comfortable mm. really contributing in any way to that. So I, I turned uh, a three picture deal down with that. And my agents, I, but, I, but my agent manager and I all got together and we were like, well, I, I want to work. I can't just continue to turn, turn down work. And they said, would you do a scope? And I said, yeah, of course. And, um, and I don't know, a few days later, they called me and said, all right, don't get too excited, but they want to see you over at general hospital. I saw your picture. They've already they got this character Ned Ashton, but he's already cast. But they haven't signed the paperwork yet. They're a little on the fence about the guy. Um, yeah. They want to see a couple more people. So, um, how soon can you get over there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> and uh, I got over there and I read for the casting director, whose name escapes me now. You probably know who it is. Mark Teschner. Before I'm Mark. I'm not sure who it is. Then yeah, I can't remember. Right. The old timer been there for yeah, somebody might somebody might tell us um yeah somebody knows and i should what i, I do should, um I, I should remember right um yeah so um I, by the time i got home there was a, a, a message on my answering machine that i had a screen test the following day or two days later maybe it was something like that mm-hmm. And so I went in for the screen test and I literally was with every bouncer from every club in Hollywood who was a six foot two, three, perfectly tanned, perfectly built Kendall <laughs> and, and, and me, you know, and I'm, I'm like, I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? And I said, and then I was sitting there and I go, well, what the hell? You give it Mark, your best shot. Is what you're I, got, doing. I got zero to lose, <laughs> zero, because clearly the, they don't. They they want that. <laughs> and I went in there, and uh, apparently, come to find out, I went up on my lines considerably, but I just made shit up and kept going. And um, and that was part of the reason I got the part. They said you just made up the biggest crock of shit, but it was so <laughs> believable. It was so believable. They were Did like, you screen test with that's someone? That's was it with? Dead. Um, yeah, I would have had to, wouldn't I? I'm trying to think if it was Robin Bernard, if they had me test with Robin Bernard or 
Maybe it was Leslie Charleston. I don't, I don't remember. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a day or two ago. It's a day or two ago. <laughs> but you, you would think some big moments like that you would remember. Um, but um, yeah, and, um, and you were, were you nervous for that at all? Did you have any idea what what the the daytime volume and you know pace was like before you went uh, in there? I'm pretty sure that everything that I've ever gotten was because I really was not too uh, invested in it. In, in, in that, not that I didn't invest in the dialogue and trying to learn, you know, do my best with the, the character. But I, I think it was, you know, it's a lot of pressure if you go in for um, uh, a movie like I did for like Thelma and Louise or something like that. You go in for movies like that and there's, this is, this could be it, you know, but you go in for something else, especially if you're not that privy to how popular it is. Now I knew general hospital, I'd heard it. I knew of it. I knew it was a popular show. But I didn't realize how popular it was, especially back in the eighties. Um, you're not kidding. <laughs> yeah. But I was super excited about it. I was like, Oh, that would be great, man. This would be, you know, I wouldn't have to wait tables anymore. I'd be, you know, I'd be a, a working actor. Um, but I, I was convinced that, I don't have a shot, you know, I don't have a shot. At this. Well, when you saw those six foot. Yeah. Know, just, bouncers, you yeah. Were like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. They, they don't want me. <laughs> but, but you know, I'm, you worked, you worked with some incredible people. I did. Yeah. It was great. Oh, Leslie and, and Stuart. Yeah. What do you, what do you remember about working with them? Um, well, Stuart was, of course, Prince Charming for me from Cinderella, <laughs> the little boy watching Cinderella. Every year, you know, Cinderella came on once a year. The Wizard of Oz came on once a year. Certain things, you know, Charlie Brown Christmas once a yep. year. Uh, the Grinch, you know, these are all things you grew up watching, you know, once a year. Um, and, um, and it, you know, when I got there and I didn't really know his character, I didn't I had heard of the Quartermain family, but I wasn't, I, I hadn't really watched the show. I think in college one time I was in like the main hall area and they had a TV going and, and it was a scene with Robin Bernard walking down the street and she was in a wedding dress and she was all distraught. Like, I don't know, she was having an out of body experience or <laughs> she ran away from her wedding. Like, like they all do on soaps. Yeah. And I think, so I, that's kind of what I knew of it. Um, and, um, and so I didn't really know until I, 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 I got on set and got to work with those people, but they were all just, they were great. And Ken Schreiner, uh, and, um, and, um, Jane Elliott, you know, took me under their wing and, um, uh, and yeah, there was Ken. Um, yeah. Oh, you got to work with Jane. What a, what a talent too. I, I will be with Jane, um, next weekend. For what? Uh, just hanging out. Oh, that's awesome! I yeah. wish she would do this. I wish she would do this with me. She, she used to be on Guiding Light. She worked with Jerry Verdorn. I'm. She's Light. elusive. <laughs> <laughs> She's what? She was she on was? Guiding Light, working with Jerry Verdorn back in the day. That's right, and Maeve Kincaid too, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, so I will see her in, in, in one week. We usually see each other once a year. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. Um, she gets placed out of, around Orient Point every year for a month. And so Miranda and I always go and, and hang out and visit. I love uh, that. And you and you posted a picture with Jennifer the other day yourself, right? Um, I think you posted a magazine cover or somebody did. I oh, yeah. 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 No, I did. I, I was going through, I've been going through stuff. And, um, you know, once a week, I try to post some some vintage. It's uh, great. They're great. I, I took a couple and used them. <laughs> yeah, you did. Oh, good. Uh, more to come. I just can't. I, I, I'll keep digging through my my archives. But it's a good thing I saved all that stuff. You know, you don't you don't think to, to do that a lot of times. But, um, you know, I mean, is it, is it incredible to you to think that that character is still on their canvas? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it is and it isn't because all those characters are all still there. You know, yeah. had I had I stayed on the show, I wanted to go do other things. I left. I did the Robert Conrad thing. I did some other stuff. And then uh, and then by then, that was a couple years later, 
uh, that you know Wally was already playing the character. He was he was set by then, um, and um, and Guardian Light came out. So I thought, yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go do another show. And and I, I honestly didn't think it would last uh, as long as it did. And um, and uh, not not the sh not the show, but me. Yeah, I, I would last as long the, as I the did. character or yeah, staying. The character. Or, or, how, did, how did the role of Matt come about? Um, so my, I finally, I did a interview with masters of Kung Fu magazine. All right. And cool story. Remind me to circle back to that, but, um, they wanted to know what I'd been up to. So I go and do this, this interview, this in-depth interview with the magazine. And at the end of us, so what, you know, what are you going to, how are you going to use the story? We're just going to put it as a little insert story. And I said, um, how about the cover? And the guy goes, oh, I don't know. You're not really doing any martial arts movies right now. I said, no, but I plan on doing more. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a good story. And he goes, you know, you're right. It is a good story. He goes, all right, you got the cover. So then they called me in for the photo shoot, and I did the cover of Masters of Kung Fu magazine for July of 1994. So, and the caption was uh, Kurt McKinney back after hospital stay. Because I was had been on General Hospital, so a lot of people I think it was a big selling magazine because I think they thought that I'd been in the hospital all these years, <laughs> <laughs> eight years in the hospital. Um, so um, uh, the, in the in the article we talked about me leaving General Hospital to do other things and not saying yes to the American Ninja series or to No Retreat No Surrender Part Two and Three and Four um, and and the guys, one of the, his comment was, wow, I, because you actually, I think you turn down more work than you actually take. And I was like, well, yeah, you might be right, you know. And I got home and I got to thinking about that. And I'm like, all right, enough is enough. I'm The next thing that comes along, I'm taking it. My agent, I called my agent and said, I don't care what it is. I'll audition for anything. And um, they said, you back for a soap? And I said, yep, I'm back for a soap. And that was the first audition I got. And I went in there because it was in New York and I had Rhonda and I had a home in LA. We were quite happy. Uh, I had gone back to selling cars though to make ends meet. And um, yeah. And uh, so a lot of people, Ned Ashton sold a lot of cars. To people. <laughs> I bet he did. I bet he did. <laughs> so I, I, I go in, of course, without, a, you know, hoping that I don't get it, but, but not able to, um, not able to sabotage it, you know, just because it just, I, you know, I, I can't do that. I had to give it my all. So, um, but there's no, there's no nerves when you don't want something. There's no pressure. You're not performing for anybody. You're not hoping that you live up to somebody's expectation. You're not dying to get the job you just go in and do it and of course they said um we want you to go for the screen test and the money they offered in the beginning was not enough to entice me to leave and go to new york and sell you know well rent our house out uh to barbara crampton um and, <laughs> that's so yeah. funny because that's who i was going to mention earlier about horror film and soaps yeah, she's done yeah. Both. i love yeah. that yeah <laughs> Um, but she was too scared and moved out after a couple of weeks. She was too scared to live alone. So I don't know what she did, but, um, <laughs> funny story, but she'll, you'll talk to her about it. I'm sure. Um, so, um, I said no. And then they came back with a little more money. I said, that's just not enough. I got to pack up and move. I got to do all this. No. And they said, okay, well that they just, they're not going to budge. And I said, okay, forget it. And so I'm literally in the car dealership at, you know, seven o'clock six o'clock one evening on in north hollywood north hollywood mazda and i'm sitting there and i'm sitting at my desk and i'm just sitting there i'm looking around the showroom and i'm going what in the hell are you doing just do it call my agent oh my god i don't know it's 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 three hours later in in new york let me call them you know you're on the red eye get you know they'll send a car they're gonna pick you up and you're going to new york literally got to the hotel the Tudor hotel and i think i slept for two hours um and three hours maybe tops and then went over and had the screen test 
Um, again, really no pressure because I was hoping I wouldn't get it. Um, but yeah, kind of want, you know, not wanting to continue selling cars oh, either. Yeah. I was hoping I was also up for like a, a mini series at that time. That was Daniel Steele mini series that I was down to the wire on. I was like, well, if I hold out, maybe I'll get that. And I go, no, you can't hold out for stuff. Did you, you know, screen that, test with Maze? I screen tested with Sonia Satra for that. Wow. Yeah. Where, where, was that where they were uh, targeting you for, for Lucy and Matt? Or was that just who they I, used? I, 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 I'm not sure. I knew it was going to be the Matt and Vanessa storyline, but they weren't oh, sure. Oh, you did. I was curious if you knew I, that's I, what I think that was. That, that, that was a storyline for sure. But... I don't know if Maeve wasn't available for the screen test or they thought that that was going to be a short lived. I, I'm pretty sure they thought that would be a short lived uh, gotcha. way to introduce uh, Matt to, to guiding light and then have him run off in a different direction. It wasn't Matt and Vanessa. I don't believe anyone ever thought would succeed the way it did and be as, 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 uh, as a loved, beloved storyline as it was. Well, luckily. well, well, speaking of that, you know, Jill Laurie, you know, has some questions. You oh, know, what, okay. what, what was your take on that phenomenon? Like, when did you realize it really had taken off? Um, well, I think when they just, you know, you kind of realize when they, when, you know, every soap magazine wants to do another story, when you get, you know, performer of the week or couple of the week or, you know, we got, you know, um, you just keep writing stuff for you and the fan mail comes in. Oh my gosh. I've, I've been married to an, an, you know, a woman 10 years older than me or 15 years older than me. Uh, this is the greatest. I love the storyline, <laughs> you know, and you just, and, and, and the Matessa name. Yeah. Yeah. Contessa. <laughs> Was yeah. it Matessa? Matt? Uh, Matessa. Oh, right. I called her contest contest. <laughs> yes. You, yes, yes, you did. But you well, become uh, the yeah, you become uh, that. What you is do, it? you know. Yeah. But Jill shared this story. She said, you know, the actors had such a great relationship, but being part of a soap couple is like wearing golden handcuffs. Once you are a happy couple, we stop writing for you. And Maeve sat with Jill Lori Hurst on the bench outside the Forty Fourth Street Studio conference room and asked her to encourage writers to break you up and make it Vanessa's fault. She said that you, Kurt, had so much talent to bring to the canvas, but would never be allowed to play anything but the happy husband unless Vanessa dumped you. Wow. Wow. Did she? Wow. Yeah. Listen, Maeve is a very special person, as you know. Um, so that that doesn't that doesn't surprise me. Um, but we had a great, that said, we had a great time together. We had a lot, a lot of great stuff to do. It was a little bit the kiss of death. Oh, yeah. I love, love that. I, why was it okay. these outfits? Oh I don't God. remember. You don't, you what? I don't remember. Don't why, remember? why were you dressed that way? Do you remember exactly? Matt Reardon. He's Scottish, you know, and that was a Scottish kilt. You know, or Irish. <laughs> I don't know if it's I. I don't know if it's Irish, considered Irish or Scottish. I'm McKinney's Scottish, so I, you know, people always think it's Irish, but it's Scottish. So, um, but yeah, so we we had a traditional Scots Irish wedding. It's called. Um, well, all the fans are, you know, so glad you said yes to Matt. The chemistry was undeniable between the uh, two of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you did did you feel that just immediately? I mean, you just worked so well together. I, I think I did. I think one one when I realized it the most is in the cave, on the island. You know, I think we you just you, had, you gave me chills again. I really? Mean, yeah, because uh, I yeah I just remember watching that. Yeah, um, and then the the with the fire, the smoke clearing. You know, and then she comes out of the. Smoke or I came out of the smoke. I don't know who came out of the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> One of us was looking for the other. I think I was looking for her. She comes out, but um, yeah. I mean, you know, maybe it's a terrific 
actor, you know, as you know, and, and, um, she, she made it easy, you know, for me, you know, and hopefully I made it easy for her, but we, we genuinely liked each other, loved each other. We just, uh, you know, she's so smart and, and, and so, um, thoughtful. Um, that's why I said it didn't, doesn't surprise me that she, she said something like that to, to Jill. Um, but, um, and, and we were always both invested in making, you know, as you know, soaps are turned over, are done so quickly and the writing is so quick and fast and, and, and it's often redundant. And so we would always, every day, luckily on Guiding Light, not all soap, but luckily we had a little bit of liberty with the dialogue. Mm-hmm. So, that, you know, as long as we didn't change the, the, the storyline, we yeah. could play with the dialogue to make it, to make it roll off of the tongue a little better and to make it, uh, um, um, just more palatable, you know, I think, you know, and, and Maeve was really good at that and I really enjoyed that. So I think that, that helped too. We were just able to just jiggle the dialogue enough to really make it feel natural for both of us. Well, Michael says Kurt and Maeve had the most beautiful chemistry and the most endearing love story. Um, you know, you worked with, you know, I, I just said, uh, read what a fan said about, so glad you said yes. Are you glad you said yes? To to guiding light? To Matt, oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Um, because really, the, the, the reality of our business is that you can say no to something, and that might be the last shot you got of, of, of saying yes or no to something. So, you know, you always think, well, there'll be something around the corner. There'll be something else next. And for no rhyme or reason, sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't, you know. So, um, you know, it it really it's it got me to New York. I'm still in New York. Uh, uh, It was a blessing to get to raise my kids in Westchester County. It's a great place uh, to raise a family. So in in many ways, it's uh, it was a, a, a real, real blessing. And. And just a great, great experience. I, I um, missed LA for a long time. I continue to miss LA. Uh, don't know um, uh, where I would live if I went back, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> um, uh, don't know that I'll ever live there again. But um, it, 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 for for sort of coming of age time of your life, New York or LA or uh, you know Chicago, San Francisco, any of those big cities, I think are great places to live for young people and to get to spend all of my twenties and into my thirties, uh, in LA was, a, was, was, was great. And so I'm all, so even though Louisville, Kentucky's home, LA is sort of like the home of the, 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 the beginnings of the grown up Kurt, you know, you yeah. sort of <laughs> the, the dad, the dad Kurt. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wasn't dead till New York, but yeah, just, just a young adult, you know, yeah. you, teenage years and you're, you're young when you're still feel like a kid in Kentucky. And then when you're a young adult in LA and then full fledged adult with kids and all that stuff. Once, once, I, once New York, after we hear a couple of years, I have to ask you about a couple of your co-stars on guiding light. Um, first of all, you know, Maeve's on-screen daughters, you know, working opposite Wendy, and Gina Tagnoni, mm-hmm. um, what was that like? And watching those those young women, their talent. Well, both both incredibly talented. Um, uh, I what can be said? It was it was. I, I was fortunate to get to work with with both of them. I think that there was uh, there was good chemistry um, um, with them as well as as Maeve. So you know. Oh I'll God, like, yes, yeah. She is. Right. You know, yes. Um, they, they, with Maeve, so maybe incredible. it's not me. Maybe it's just all the women. They, they yeah. all- and, 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 <laughs> and, you know, those all three women also had with our late Jerry Verdorum, you know, had great chemistry. Maeve, that's Wendy, right. And Gina. Had yeah. Great, yeah. And Gina. Yeah. Was- it's hard not to have good chemistry with Jerry. I mean, Jerry is such a yeah, that's great. Um, She'll be there this Sunday as well, Gina. I saw that on the list. I'm, yeah, I'm, Gina will be there. So it's been great. Um, Looking forward to seeing and Maeve too. I saw on there. Is she going to be there? She unfortunately cannot. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah. Well, I and, maybe I are in contact once in a while. Yeah, she um, was supposed to, and she she feels horrible, but she can't. Um, well, I'll just call her and just bug her. And yeah, you know, there you go. Maybe maybe. <laughs> um, talk about Jerry. Did, what you remember? Did you, know, did you know? I will. But do you know that Beth and I did power together? Do you know that story? I, you know, I think so. I forgot you, you like walked into the makeup room or something, right? Yeah. It was like, we were Mr. and Mrs. Moorhead. <laughs> and, and there, I'm like, what are you doing here? And she's like, I'm, I'm, you know, Mrs. Moorhead. I said, I'm Mr. Moorhead. <laughs> but... I don't know if the casting person knew what she was doing or not. But that, was, that's like an know, only in New York moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we 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 worked all day on on that show Power. That was a, that was a real treat, fun, good show uh, star, for stars, and uh, just a real. I mean, what are the odds? And because yeah. we actually, um, she's another one. We had um, great chemistry. We had I don't know if you remember, but we had they toyed with with yeah. that storyline as well, um, and. Um, and and I think they had some, some really good stuff. And I believe what happened uh, with most of these instances, um, whether it would be Matt going running off with Dinah or Matt uh, running off with um, um, what best character um, was it? What was her character? Uh, Beth. <laughs> Beth. Oh, it was Beth. You're right. <laughs> um, and so. Um, I think that the the Vanessa and Matt fans were so rigid about the, these people can never be broken up. I don't think the studio, I don't think the producers could could do it. I mean, I think they were literally uh, afraid of a riot. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't surprise me. It do doesn't yeah. surprise me. But it yeah. was fun seeing you, Frank, and Mike get to do some comedy you know, with the Lonely Hearts Club at the end, near the end. Oh, that's right. That's right. Frank and Mikey and... Uh, we have to go back and see those those final episodes there. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. I, I've got a couple... I think I have that whole week or something. Um, yeah. Michael Maloney, if you remember, is a reporter. Do you remember? He was curious, you know, your feelings on Billy and Vanessa getting back together at the end. Oh, I thought it was great. I liked it. Uh, part of me did, and the other part of me said no, <laughs> no. Matt and Vanessa, shit, we've we've done it all these years, and you're gonna you're gonna bail in the final mm -hmm. hour. Um, I think that um, it was kind of cool on one hand, but I, I guess no. Now that I rehash it a little bit, no, <laughs> they messed up. I think that Matt and Vanessa should have driven off in the sunset together. Yeah, it, it, it's a that's a hard one. I'm torn on that because I love both. Yeah, and again, that's you know, yeah, it's Guiding Light's casting. Guiding Light just did cast. You know, they cast people, male, female, perfectly. Because well, you know, one just... of the, I'll tell you one of the things that uh, Jane Elliott said to me when I told her they you know want me to test for uh, Guiding Lights. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, if I want to do this, she goes, Kurt. She goes, it's an adventure. You probably go there for a couple, two or three years, and you'll be back in L.A., or you'll be back doing, you'll be doing something else. Go. She goes, Guiding Light is known for some of the best actors in daytime, is what she told me. And that was part of, of, of the thinking that I was going through my head, going, okay, what, what's wrong with moving to New York for a couple of years? You know, 20-some-odd <laughs> luck. Years later, <laughs> that's what's wrong with it. <laughs> Two years, <laughs> totally. You know? So you were asking totally. me about Jerry, Jerry Verdorn. I yes, pl please share. You both, you know, um, Lisa Brown, who not only played, uh, not your sister, Nora. your sister. She played. No, I know she played Nora. Nora. It was yeah. your aunt, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and you worked with her on he Gotham. Le right. Lisa and I had some great stuff together. Uh, I remember a scene on like the back staircase right outside of the, the what was the name of the little company? Cafe? Your company, right outside of company. We had these great scenes together. Um, uh, great, great actress. I mean, she was like 
did 42nd Street, right? I mean, she was. She was I right. think I saw Lisa. Oh, yeah. My high school trip to New York City, I think I saw Lisa do 42nd Street. Wow. Yeah. yeah must have been that amazing. was my first show, and I'm pretty positive she was in it because I watched Guiding Light at the time. Yeah. Um, but I know she was also pregnant. You know, she left it to be pregnant. So I don't have the playbill to tell me that I 100% saw Lisa, but I'm pretty positive I did. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people that came on the show. Rebecca Luker was on our show, uh, broad, big Broadway star. We did a we did a uh, Hallmark movie together with Mary Louise Parker and Peter Gallagher uh, called Cupid and Kate. And Rebecca Luker was also, I remember on Guiding Light, we were talking one day and I said, how do you, she was asking me, she goes, how do you get a soap? How do you break into soap? I would love to do a soap. And I go like, how do you do Broadway? How do you how do you break into that? You have this great career, but she we were both intrigued by uh, each other's careers, I think. And and then, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, we both uh, got a Hallmark Hall of Fame movie together and actually got to work together a little bit. Kind of cool, small that. world, right? And, and but, we keep um, interrupting. You know, at, let let's end on Jerry since this weekend is the 19th annual Daytime Stars and Strikes, which. He started 19 years ago with Liz and Wendy Madore. Um, yeah. What do you remember about Jerry as a as a man and fellow colleague? Just steady. Just a steady, easygoing, um, thoughtful, um, great sense of humor. <laughs> um Love to have a, a glass of Pinot Grigio at the end of the day before he had to make his, wanted to wait till the traffic died down. So he had to have a Pinot Grigio before he headed home. Um, but just a sweetheart of a guy. Yeah. I remember one of my last memories is Jerry not working on the day, I guess, that I was working on one of the last episodes of Guiding Light. Uh, we filmed, um, we shot it um, over New Jersey. Um, and he, um, he came, came out. Up. Yes. On his boat. Yeah. Jerry just living the life, man, just cruising up in his runabout uh, with his wife and uh, docked and, you know, hung out with us for a little bit. We talked. That's one of my, uh, oh, that's I actually not the last memory. I have a great picture somewhere um, of uh, me and Jerry on one of the, um, of, of, of one of the um, Stars and Strikes events, which I think oh. was when they were doing it over in New Jersey. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if that was. It's probably uh, it's it's pre-pandemic yeah. sometime. Yeah. Right. Right before the pandemic, and then I guess then they didn't have it for a couple of years with the pandemic. Yeah. It, or, yeah. Right. We haven't had this is the first in person since the pandemic happened. Yeah. So it was just right before the pandemic was was. Uh, so it was, was probably last. 2019, probably. Yeah. Probably yeah. so. Yeah. Wow. Well, I look forward to seeing you in person, my friend. Thank well, you for doing this. Hey, man, anytime. It's always always fun to reminisce uh, about well, uh, the fans really loved good. seeing you, loved hearing these stories. I loved hearing these stories. Great. Well, thank you. I hope to see a bunch of people tomorrow. I've already yeah. got some. some On Sunday. Uh, Sunday. You'll see oh, them Sunday. Sunday. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I, thank you, too, everybody. Yeah. Uh, on Sunday, I will be there. I'm looking forward to it. Hang out here for just a second while I sign off. Sure. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you to Kurt McKinney. Don't forget, you can still purchase virtual tickets to the Bradley Cole and Friends concert that will stream right here in the locker room tomorrow, Saturday evening at 7.45 p.m. Just visit uh, DaytimeStarsAndStrikes.com. Remember, the proceeds from the evening go to the Jerry Verdorn Scholarship Fund, which sends kids on the autism spectrum to theater camps. Please join me on Thursday, October 13th, when Michael Damien stops by, and then next Friday, Sean Kanan and Anika Noel from The Bold and Beautiful will be here. Also, I just found out Jessica Lachia will be at the bowling event on Sunday. So um, if you are around and want to get tickets, you can. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. Have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing many of you in person for the first time. And have a great weekend. I'll see you next week.